Hi everyone and welcome to another video by BioTeach London. Thank you so much for joining me on this video which is focused on giving you more of an overview on what to expect for Unit 6 Assignment B. Don't forget I have posted Learning Aim A already and you should be able to watch that video by clicking the link that's just flashed up on your screen. Now Learning Aim B requires learners to produce a plan for an investigative project. That is basically a plan for the experiment that you wish to carry out. For the past criteria, you need to be able to produce a realistic working plan, basically taking into account any possible constraints or anything that might be a hindrance to your experiment. You need to have a basic method that your teacher can follow. So the method needs to be very nice and clear and an instructional format. When you submit your plan, you need to take into account health and safety implications. So you will need to carry out a risk assessment as well. For the merit part of this assignment, you need to include something known as contingency planning. You need to basically talk about issues that you had in the planning and how you overcame them. The issues could be to do with equipment, so say if something wasn't working or it stopped working or you didn't know how to use it, something along those lines. And then for the distinction part, you need to reflect on your plan and justify any changes that you made. So let's say, for example, you needed to allow more time to undertake the experiment. You would say that you needed more time as a change to the plan and justify to say why you needed more time. Let's say you needed to use another method or use another piece of apparatus. Explain the situation and say why the change was made. This will basically all be presented in the reports that you're going to write for this assignment, as well as your logbook. The logbook is something that you'll be asked to work on from the first assignment. It's basically a diary or a journal where you can write down everything that you've done for this unit. You would put down dates for what you were doing. You'd have to include things like what you did, what you researched, what you learned from that particular piece of research. Just think of it as a journal and you should be fine. It's always useful to know what your teachers will be looking for when they mark your work. So if you're a teacher using this video, it might be worth using the following guidelines as a checklist for part of the assessment. As a student, the next part of the video will help to organize your work a bit better and also maximize the chances of getting a higher grade. So firstly, let's have a look at the planning part of the assignment. When we plan any scientific investigation, we need to take into consideration the method we want to use. From your literature review, you might see multiple different methods that you could use for your experiment. So you will need to discuss these in your report and state which one was the chosen one. Make sure that you make a clear list of the resources you will need for the lab technicians, because if you're working in the school or lab, you probably will need to provide them to the lab technicians or your teachers in a timely fashion so that they can get something set up for you. You also want to consider if any of the equipment or chemicals or solutions that you need may or may not be available in the lab. Your school or college will need time to order new things in, or you may need to bring some things from home as well. For example, if you do the burning foods practical, you might be asked to bring in your own food types to burn. So just be aware of that. I mentioned earlier about contingency planning. A contingency plan is basically a proactive way of avoiding any major blunders in your practical. So basically accounting for anything that could go wrong before something has actually gone wrong. And your aim really is to suggest a way past that in case the worst was to happen. And there's a number of reasons why contingency planning is so important. Firstly, we're talking about averting any major disasters um, in your work. So let's say, for example, you're collecting gas released in an experiment. You can collect it either in a glass syringe that's attached to rubber tubing, or you could monitor the movement of an air bubble in a capillary tube filled with some liquid. By stating the options in your report, you'll be demonstrating that you've thought about the options that are available and should something not work out in the way that you planned, then you've got a plan B that you can go to. When making a contingency plan, I would be asking myself some very specific questions. Things like, what if my equipment doesn't work? What will I use instead? What happens if my method is incorrect? Is there an alternative method? And if so, what is that method? What happens if the specific apparatus gets damaged? What are my options if something breaks? What happens if you can't get a hold of specific reagents or solutions? What do I do then? 
hopefully in asking these questions in relation to your specific investigation, you can put some notes together in your logbooks and your assignment that will go towards the merit part of this particular assessment. The next part of your assignment should really include various health and safety considerations for your investigation. Your school or college might provide you with a pro forma for a risk assessment. This is basically a form that you would fill out or you might get to create your own form um, depending on how your school or college works. So again, it's about having that important conversation with yourself, really. Look at each part of your method and determine whether any actions carried out will present a risk. Let's say, for example, you're using a hot plate, then you could have a risk of burns. If you're using a water bath, there's a risk of spillage. If you're using glassware, there's a risk of smashing it. Or you could burn yourself if you've got an open flame from a Bunsen. Most of this part of the risk assessment or this assessment itself is actually quite a lot of common sense. But you do have to discuss the type of hazard, the level of risk and the prevention of injury, as well as how to minimise the hazards very clearly. I personally would recommend that you create a table in your logbook to help you discuss each part of your investigation, just to make sure that you don't forget anything important. For example, you might need to consider wearing personal protective equipment or PPE. So a lab coat, goggles, they're quite basic, but you might want to write down if you need gloves, if you're handling something that's an irritant to skin, for example. Will you need a face mask if you're using a fume cupboard or, you know, just to mitigate any fumes not taken up by the fume hood? If you're doing lawn cultures of E. coli, you'll be using aseptic techniques and something like that will need disinfectant and very careful handling. So you need to pop that in your work to show that you've considered the investigation carefully. Some of you might be using subjects to experiment on. So for example, many students choose to look at the effect of caffeine on heart rate. So you could pick Daphnia or water fleas if your school or college can get a hold of them, but there are some students who opt to choose human subjects instead. There are some ethical considerations for this. You would need to gain consent from individuals and also take into account their overall health and well-being before you decide to do an experiment on them. Whilst water fleas or Daphnia are fairly abundant, you may wish to discuss animal welfare considerations in your plan just to show that you've covered it. So I hope that was really useful for you all. Feel free to leave me any questions or comments below this video if you have any and share this video with anyone who you think might find it useful. In the description of this video, I've added the links for the playlist for Unit 6 as well as any other videos that I think would be relevant for you. Thank you so much for watching. Bye for now.